Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here, and I thought today I would do a start to finish tutorial. Uh, we're going to take a look at the image that you see here on screen. This is the finished image that we did, and I want to show you the original. I'm going to show you the before image by hitting the backslash key on my keyboard. So here's the before. Ah, <laughs> it's horrible. Okay, that's the horrible beginning image, and here's where we're going to end here. Now, a couple things that you're going to want to know. This is not an HDR image, number one. Number two, we're not using any plugins at all. We're just going to do this all in Lightroom. Now, first, let's go take a look at the settings. Basically, here's what we did. We changed the white balance a little bit. We increased the exposure a little bit, a little bit of contrast. Took out some of the highlights, which brought those windows back in here and a little bit of shadows and stuff. Now, this this looks like a lot of work, but it was actually really easy. I'm going to start off and just reset it to where we're back to the original awful image, and here we go. All right, so the first step is you could go and just hit the auto button and see how that looks. You know, uh, the thing about the auto button that I've learned is it, it sometimes is okay, but if it's usually anything, it, it overexposes by a little bit. So it generally makes things too bright. But let's just look at the image and see what's wrong with it before we go any further. So I hit the auto button. It doesn't look awesome. So a uh, couple things that are wrong with it. Um, well, I mean, it looks kind of flat. That's number one. Number two is the windows are blown out here. When you do hit the auto button and you crank it up, it is blown out. So that's the, probably the first thing that I would try to fix was to bring back the detail in those windows. So it's a highlight issue, right? It's the brightest part of the image has kind of gotten blown out. So let's go to the highlights and drag them over until we bring back detail. Now I took it to about 89 right there and that took the, the problems out here and the problems out in those windows. So that's really not too bad just making that one change. Um, next, it, the image looks flat, and anytime you see an image that looks flat, and this one definitely does, I always think to grab for contrast. Contrast is going to make it less flat. Look what just contrast alone did. That did quite a bit. Uh, as far as shadows go, uh, look in here. It's very dark and shadowy in there, so let's go to the shadows and brighten them up a bit. All right, we're starting to look better, but do you see like an overall lighting problem in this issue. And here's what it is. So take a look, even though I just cranked the shadows quite a bit, this side of the church, because the lights are there in the cathedral, this is really, really lit. This is opposite of it. It's really, really dark. So we need to balance the two sides. I think that's a really big issue here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to basically repaint the light in this room. And I think that's that's going to make the biggest difference. So we're going to go to the adjustment brush. We're going to double click on the word effect and that zeroes all the sliders out. Then, quite simply, we're going to brighten this side. We're going to darken that side, right? This side's too dark. That side's a bit too bright and kind of washed out. So let's start by darkening the left side. I'm just going to lower the exposure. It won't be the right amount. We'll go tweak it in a second. Just pick a random number and we're going to start painting over this side of the church and I think I went too dark but that's okay that's what's great about the adjustment brush you can go back later and pick the right amount but right now I think I I picked the wrong amount all right we're going to kind of paint that stuff in on that side of the church now you could say well that kind of almost matches the other side but I think it's actually too dark let's go and click on it and bring it back a little bit there we go. So now the two sides are fairly matched and you might even want to crank the contrast up just a hair because it's looking washed out on that side. Now, this side up top is okay. It's all in here that's dark. Now, if you want to paint in a new area, you got to click the button called New. All right, that lets, that lets Lightroom low. Leave what I left. I'm going to go someplace new and let's make this brighter. Let's brighten the exposure and I'm going to go paint right in here and inside that column inside that column down there and all in here needs to be uh, brought out that's all kind of too dark that might have been a little too aggressive on that on that column right there in the front don't you think maybe all right yeah I got a little carried away on that column if you make a mistake hold the option key on Mac or the alt key on Windows and you can just paint it back so that you're like I made a mistake eraser tool um, it, it's a lot more balanced now, a lot, lot more. Now it's still kind of bright right in there because you can see there's some natural light over there. So if that's drawing your eye and it's drawing mine, go hit new, double click effect to zero everything out. And we're going to go to the highlight slider and just 
pull that back over there. That does not need to be that bright. In fact, let's pull the exposure down a little bit. There we go. Uh, what's left to do here? Well, anytime I see a photo with a lot of texture, I'm going to go over here to the regular basic panel and increase the clarity a little bit. Watch what the clarity does. It brings out all that texture. Now at 100, at 100 it's crazy. It looks like HDR. So I'm just going to use a very low number, maybe 20 or 30, just to bring a little texture out. And you can see we're pretty much there. There are two last things that I would do. Um, to get rid of lens distortion, I would definitely go to the lens correction panel. I would turn on the enable profile corrections. Let's see what it does. All right, see how it took that? There was a lens distortion issue. It, the whole photo was kind of bowing out towards you. So let's just turn that on. Now I'm going to hit constrain crop. To that, that doesn't do anything at this point unless I click one of these upright buttons. It'll automatically crop away anything that's wrong. Uh, let's try auto. I think auto will usually overcorrect when something's this tilted. So let's see. It it straightened it correctly. I just don't like the way it looks. Sometimes it goes too far. Let's try leveling it. it so there's here's off, and then level. I think I kind of like off better. So all I'm going to do is enable the profile correction, and I'm not going to really do anything else. I think the rest looks okay. My last finishing move would be to go to Effects, and just we're going to darken the edge a little bit all the way around just to kind of take the, the, the heat off it here. So let's go. Uh, I use minus 11 as my number generally, just to put a little bit. I don't want you to know that I put a vignette. I don't want you to go, oh, vignette, but I want it to be kind of subtle like that. But watch the difference just this little bit of it makes. Watch. See how it just kind of rounds off the edges a little bit and kind of focuses your attention back in the middle? And at this point, I think we're pretty much there. You could adjust the whites and blacks if you want to bring up the whites a little and see if you can do that without, you know, messing up the highlights or anything. And the blacks, well, actually, they're okay where they're at. Uh, I didn't need to touch vibrance or anything. Just adding the contrast made the colors more vibrant. But I will say this, the overall color looks a little funky. So, I mean, it's not bad, but let's go to, and let's try the different ones. What's auto look like? It's too blue. Daylight's going to be yellowish. Woo! Cloudy's going to be more so. Shade's going to be more so. Tungsten's going to be very blue. How does fluorescent look? Isn't that weird? Fluorescent doesn't look bad. It looks a tad on the blue side, but really it's not bad. Let's compare it with as shot. See, the ad shot was a little greenish, and I think it looks better in fluorescent. I would just like it a little bit warmer, and so I'm going to take the white balance and move it a little towards warmth, and I think we're done. So let's look at a before and after. There's where we started, and just making those simple changes uh, in Lightroom make a huge, huge difference. So there you go. I thought I would do something different for this Friday and uh, just make that little change and... Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and uh, if you like this kind of thing, I can do more of them because I have plenty of images that look terrible when I started. So anyway, have a good time, everyone. Thanks very much, and don't forget, if you're into this Lightroom stuff, two things. Number one, make sure you come out to Vegas and spend three days with us at the Photoshop World Conference 2016. It is July 19th through 21st. Number two... Uh, I have a ton of classes, and we have a ton of classes from some of the best-known names in Lightroom training over at KelbyOne.com. You could join right now, take the 10-day free trial, and just watch them till your head explodes. So thanks very much. <laughs> take care, guys. We'll see you next time.